In this video, I'm going to walk you through the setup of your first Crew AI project. We're not going to focus too much on the technical aspect of it. In fact, this is going to be a very beginner friendly video. So if you have a little bit or even if you have no programming experience, the main focus of this video is going to be to get you comfortable with the technologies that you need to install and also so that you can understand why these technologies are needed in order for you to run not just this project, but also other agent projects in the future. So if you've been following other tutorials and maybe you feel like you get stuck maybe you feel like you don't really understand why people are typing what they type in the computer to get their things to run this can help clear some of that up and it's going to help boost your learning journey if you're watching this video i know that you've already heard about agents previously i know you've already heard about all the cool things that they can do so now comes the moment of trying to build them implement them and really just understand how you can get these running on your machine so at the end of this project you'll have a three agent process which consists of your research agent it also consists of an industry analysis agent and then you're also going to get your meeting strategy agent and once this agent process is finished running once they're done talking to each other they basically would have built a strategy that goes over the topic that you asked them to discuss that did research online with some of the individuals that you tell to research about in my example i told you to do research on sam altman and alex ramosi and really i just want some feedback on how they could implement AI and both marketing strategies for solving future business problems. We're going to start from the beginning. I'm going to assume you have none of these tools installed. And also, as we go through this process, I'm going to give you a little bit of information as to why we're running these commands and as to why we're installing these tools. I haven't done these installations in quite some time. So even if I get stuck, I'm going to show you how you can go through troubleshooting so that you can figure out what the problem is. Because I understand that can get a little bit frustrating if you're just getting started on using projects from somebody else's code. So it's basically a two part video. First, we're going to set up our environment, all the tools that we need, and then we're going to download and run the code. So this is where we're going to start off, right? You've heard about Korea agents, you've heard about agent frameworks, and now you're here at the Korea website, the source of it all, and you want to get started and maybe you're not too sure how. That's completely fine. So let's just go ahead and explore this page a little bit. And we're actually going to go to the documentation right here at the bottom left. Now, I really love that they went out of their way to really organize this section, because if you want to spend some time reading on it, you know, here they have the core concepts, the how to guides, and then they even have some example projects, which I think is great. So now we could spend some time reading all this, getting familiar with it. And I definitely encourage that you skim through it, but I don't want you to get too caught up trying to understand and try to memorize all these concepts before you actually start implementing it. Because I think the way that you're gonna learn the fastest is by actually trying out some of these projects on your own and just editing them, changing them, and maybe even breaking them a little bit. So we're actually gonna go ahead and start with this prepare for meetings project. So if you're just getting started with Python or you're just getting started with program, you might have seen the GitHub page before. And depending on how familiar you are with it, this might seem a little bit overwhelming because it's kind of like, well, you know what I do with this? Where's the download button? How do I install this? How do I run it? I get it. I had all those questions when I was in school and definitely I remember just feeling a little bit stressed out by seeing things like this. I know for me personally, when I started out studying computer science, this would already be a place where I would get stuck and just get a little bit frustrated. So assuming you didn't have me here to tell you what the next step is, what I would do now, if I had to restart learning programming in the age of AI, I would just take a screenshot of this and ask ChatGPT, what should I do next? So let's go ahead and put that in our ChatGPT chat. And we're just going to ask it, how do I run this project? What tools do I need to get started? Now, I know I misspelled tools, but doing backspace takes up too much time sometimes. So we see here that it's telling us we need Python, we need a virtual environment, and we need Git. Now we, we are getting some directions here, but I think that's probably, it's probably going a little bit too much into the details. So let's ask it again and see that we want clear guidance on this. So we're gonna ask it, but how do I open it? Where do I download it? I'm a beginner and it's the first time I do one of these projects. So now we're getting a little bit more details on the directions. We get the steps of installing the necessary tools. Again, it emphasizes Python and emphasizes Git. And then it also tells us some of the other commands we need in order to get this project running. But again, we didn't really ask it a very detailed question. And I think that does matter whenever you're prompting ChatGPT. So I feel like even with ChatGPT as a beginner, this still might not be too clear for me because I'm just getting directions. I'm not really being explained why I should do these things. And again, I'm walking you through this because I think showing you how to break down some of these problems, even just using ChatGPT can be helpful in the long run especially if you don't want to waste a lot of time just doing research on YouTube or reading other things online. So if you're not getting the answers you like, just kind of keep haggling it, keep asking it to be more specific, keep mentioning the place where you're lost and you should get a better answer. Here, I'm just replying to it saying, you're telling me what to do. I don't really know what to do or why to do it. Please explain. I'm learning all this. I need more specific and clear guidance. 
I don't have anything installed in my computer. This is a new machine. And from here, you can see that we did get a better response. We got more directions and we got a clear reason as to why we're downloading this. It says install Python. Why? Python is a programming language used for the project. You need Python installed on your computer to run this Python scripts. Now that makes a little bit more sense because sure, I could look at this project and because I see this .py extension, it makes sense that it is a Python project. But again, I think originally opening this, that might not be super obvious. And again, I'm trying to emphasize that I'm starting from scratch. So here we get the commands for that. And then we get the second step, which is install Git. Git is a version control system that lets you download or clone the project from a repository. So now reading this, it makes a lot more sense to me why I have to do that Git command. Before, it just seemed like a thing I had to install and maybe I was going to type it. But that didn't give me any context as to why I needed it. But now I understand, okay. I'm downloading this Python project. The way I'm going to download it or actually clone it is by using that Git technology. So little by little, that becomes a little bit more clear to me. And I'm just not one to do things without really understanding why I should do them. So this level of clarity is very important to me whenever I'm learning anything new. Now we have step three, which is download the project. It says why. And the reply is pretty straightforward. You need the project files on your computer to run it. That makes total sense. Thank you. And here we get the step to open the command prompt terminal window, which is that black screen you see people type in all the time. And these are the steps to download the project. The only thing I don't like about this response is that it never told us to install a code editor. And that's actually a super important tool that you're going to need if you're going to be working on these projects, if you, want, if you want to change anything on them. This does work to download it and run it. But you want to have something like VS Code if you want to edit it, if you want to make changes, or if you want to make your own projects in the future. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and Google VS Code. And VS Code is completely free, so it's a great tool. It's going to be one of the most standard ones that's used by developers. When you open the page, you're going to click the Download button, and it'll take you to the version that you need for your computer. Just click Allow. And you can see here at the bottom, it's done downloading. So let's go ahead and click it. And just like that, you have your own code editor installed. So this is going to be the tool we're going to be using in order to see the code and in order to edit the code. And also, instead of you having to open your own terminal window like this separately on the side to run commands, we can actually just do it from VS Code. You just go to the top and click Terminal, New Terminal. And this black box you see right here is going to be where we're going to be running some of the commands. Let's go ahead and download and install the Python version that we're going to be using for projects. So you just have to Google Python download. From here, you'll be taken to python.org. And here you'll see the latest version. So just click download on here. And you may be wondering, well, why do we need to download Python? And the easy answer for that is because we're running a Python project. But to give you a little bit of a better explanation, think of it this way. Right now in this page where we have our Python project, we do have our Python files. If we click one of them, like main.py, we can see here the text and we can pretty much read through it we see that there's some print commands. We see that there are different things going on, which is basically a logic for the program. If we were to download this right now into our computer, it wouldn't do anything because as it stands, these files by themselves are really just that, only text. And without the Python interpreter, which is what we're downloading, your computer won't know what to do with those files. But by downloading the Python interpreter, it could take these files, which are written basically in human legible English as the Python programming language and turn this into computer commands that your machine can actually run. So that's why you download the Python interpreter. It's basically bridging the gap between what we read with our eyes and what the computer can actually understand and do. Once you finish downloading it, you're going to click your package right here and you're going to get this installation window. So just click through it. And if you have a password, make sure to put it in. And this is something I forgot to emphasize at the beginning, guys. For these installations that you're going to do for Core AI projects or really for any project, make sure you're always on an administrator account. Make sure that the account that you're on has privileges to install and download different things. The reason why this is important is because if you don't have administrative privileges, whenever it comes to installation of different things, you might get some errors because it won't have access to certain folders in your computer. And that's something that I see happening commonly. So just wanted to throw that out there. We see here that it finished installing, so we can close now. And you can just move the installer to the trash. So now that we've installed the Python interpreter to our machine, we're going to verify the installation by closing our terminal that we have here in VS Code and just opening a new one. And I'm going to keep repeating that because if you don't do that, sometimes you won't be able to see that the installation went through and you're going to start to think that something else went wrong. But really, this simple restart is going to save you a lot of time and headache that I know I've had just because I would forget to do it. So on your terminal, you're going to type Python 3 and then dash dash version. And because we already installed it, we get this message here that says Python version 3.12. Now, there's a couple more things we need in order to use Python for project. But the way we're going to download it is you're going to click right here on the left side of your VS code in extensions. 
and here we can see popular ones are Python, but if you don't see that one, you can just type it in and search it and just the one with the most views, that's the official one. It's from Microsoft, just click install. And once it's finished, we're gonna go ahead and click done. And what this extension is gonna help us do is it's gonna make it very easy for us to create our Python virtual environment whenever we start working with these projects. We'll talk a little bit more about that once we download the code for the Crew AI project. And just so you know, there are multiple ways to start up a virtual environment for a Python project, but it's my preference and I think this is probably the easiest way to do it. And when starting out, I do think it's one of the things that can cause quite a bit of a headache. So, so far we've installed VS Code. This is where we're gonna edit and work with our project. We've installed the Python interpreter. That way our machine is able to read these Python files and actually do something with them. Now we're gonna be installing Git. This is gonna be the program that allows for us to download the project from the GitHub page we're on. So let's go ahead and Google Git version control. You don't wanna click these ads. You wanna to go to git-scm.com. And from here, you just wanna to go to downloads. We're on Mac, so let's go ahead and download for Mac. Now, if you're on Mac, you're gonna see this command that says homebrew, install homebrew if you don't already have it then run the command brew install git. So for Mac users, homebrew is a very convenient package installer where basically once you install that on your computer, it makes it a lot easier for you to run the installation of other commonly used development software by just running commands. So rather than the way that we've been doing it where we go to Google, we search for the website of the application, we download it and install it. Once you download homebrew, after you have that running on your computer, you simply have to just run the right command in order to get that working on your machine. And just for clarity for Windows users, if you're on Windows, you would go to the downloads page and then Windows again. And here you can download the standalone installer. Well, let's go back to the Mac OS page and here we get the link for homebrew. So let's go ahead and click that. Here we get the install homebrew directions. We really just have to copy this command. We go back to our terminal on VS code and we're gonna paste it on there. Now, this first prompt that you get says checking for sudo access. That just means checking to verify that you actually have administrator access for this machine. So you do have to type in your password and that's just the password you would use to log on into your computer and just press enter again here. And here you get this message, installation success, but you do need to do one more command. You need to copy this into your path. Basically, we wanna manually tell your Mac computer where homebrew was installed so that you can start using the commands for it within your command prompt. And here you get the steps on how to do that. It says run these two commands in your terminal to add homebrew to your path. So after the colon here, we're gonna copy this. And that is including the double quotations right here. And just paste it down here and presenter. And now to test it out to make sure that the homebrew commands work, we're gonna do brew dash dash version. And here we see we have homebrew 4.3.7. And if for some reason you get an error that the command is not found, just close your terminal, go to the top again and open a new one and do brew dash dash version. So now that we have homebrew install, we're gonna go ahead and copy our brew command, which is just brew install git, and we're gonna paste it on here as well. And just like that, we now have the tools necessary to download and run our Python project. So now that we've installed Git, let's go a little bit over setting up your virtual environment and why that's gonna be important whenever you work with or create new Python projects. So just to make sure we're on the same page, let's go ahead and close VS Code and we'll open up a new one. We're actually just gonna quit here and start from scratch. Because of that Python extension we install, you do get the option here to pretty much just start up your Python environment on startup whenever you open VS Code but we're actually gonna ignore that. We're gonna go to view command palette. And then here, one of the options you'll see recently used because I've been using is create Python environment. But if you don't see that right away, you can just start typing Python create and you'll get that Python create environment. So you're gonna click that. And then here you're gonna click dot VNV. And that's just to create a virtual environment in your workspace. And we got this error right here because we're not actually looking at any folder, any project. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just go to our documents and create a new folder, call it test environment, and then we'll go ahead and click open. And now that we're in that folder, let's go ahead and go to view one more time, command palette, and then we'll click Python create environment. Again, we're gonna click VNV, and we're gonna select the latest version of Python, which is the one we installed. Now that we've created this Python environment, there's a couple of things that are gonna happen. So let's go ahead and open our terminal, new terminal. And you can see right here, we have this little line at the beginning that says .vnv, and then the name of the current folder we're in. So we type the Python version command. We can see right here that's Python version 3.12 running in this folder. And because we're running a Python environment now, we actually now have access to the pip command. That's just pip. Let's put dash dash version to check, make sure that it's there. And here we see the pip version. So what does setting up the virtual environment have to do with the pip command? So a quick search on ChatGPT will tell us that pip stands for pip installs packages. We can see here that it's a command line tool 
And when it comes to why it's important, we see here that it's for package management and dependency management. And maybe you've heard some of this before, maybe about how Python is so great because of all the libraries and all the different tools you can use. And the way you're able to access these tools is through the pip command. And just to be clear on what I mean by packages and libraries, it's just with this example, let's pretend that I wrote all these programs with all these amazing tools that you know, tools for data science, tools for AI, tools for mathematics. And instead of me trying to sell them or keep them to myself, I instead decide to share these tools with other people. Well, the way that people could use these tools without really even having to download the code and look through it, but just pretty much being able to call it and use it is through a package manager. So really anytime you use the pip command, you're pretty much downloading the code or libraries for tools that somebody else wrote, maybe another company, maybe a group of other developers. And through the installation that happens with that command, you'll be able to use these tools without really having to read the code unless you really want to. So that's what pip does. Pip helps you get access to other people's tools in a very easy and a very straightforward way. Well, again, back to the pip thing we we're talking about. With pip, we're able to install all kinds of different tools from all kinds of different resources. But these tools that you download are probably going to come in different versions. There might be upgrades, there might be bug fixes, there might be changes they make to it. And if I'm using a specific tool for a specific project, I really don't want to mess with the version of the tools that my project is using because otherwise it might break it, it might get it to just stop working altogether. So whenever I start a new Python project and whenever I create a new virtual Python environment for that project, I'm pretty much isolating any tools that I download, any libraries that I implement within that project is only gonna be contained to that project folder of that Python project. This way, the version of tools that I use in one project won't affect the version of tools that I use in a different project. I know that was a little bit of a long rant, but pip installs is something you're gonna be constantly doing with Python. And starting up virtual environments is pretty much gonna be a prerequisite that you're gonna to have to be doing over and over again the more you get into this kind of development. I know for me personally, at the beginning, it was a little bit frustrating to just see how many different ways there was on the internet to set this thing up, to download this tool. But at the end of the day, I just ended up going with what I think is the quickest, most pain-free way. And I do it often enough to where I really don't have to think about it. In the next video, we'll be talking a little bit more about how you're gonna download the code, how to set the right dependencies for your project to run, as well as how to do a little bit of troubleshooting in case you get some errors. And also we'll be setting up the API keys so that your agents can use ChatGPT and also actually search the web for the tasks that we are gonna give it to do. This video is gonna be important because if you're not familiar with Python syntax, if you haven't done a lot of programming, I'm also gonna cover some of the important things you need to pay attention to when you're looking at Python code. And also, if you have questions about your project, questions about AI agents, or you want a community where you can talk about these subjects, share your projects with other people, I wanna take this time to invite you to my school community. Not only is it an engaged community where we're constantly talking about these projects, but actually we're having a ton of live calls right now each week where we talk about AI projects, we talk about things that we're working on, and also pretty much we help each other troubleshoot with problems we may be stuck on. So I'm gonna leave a link for that in the description. And actually, even if you have some questions that you'd like to ask me directly, I'm also gonna leave a link where you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me completely free. And I'll be more than happy to guide you on your AI journey. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.